from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Escape 19. Well, welcome back everyone. It's CUBE coverage for the first inaugural multi-cloud conference, Escape 2019. Here we are here with Bassam Tabar, who's the CEO of Upbound, hot startup, has not yet released their product, but they're working on it. Good friend of the Cube, Cube alumni. Bassam, good to see you again. Thank you, yeah. Thanks Glad for coming, to be coming back on. on the Cube. Well, we know you guys are beavering away, digging away the product, <laughs> building it out. You have a very compelling background coming into the cloud world. Um, you're here at the multi-cloud first ever conference. That's right. It's been hybrid cloud. This is like being billed as the first multi-cloud conference. A lot of technical people here. Lots of. A lot of industry insiders. Setting the foundation is one theme I'm hearing. And then the other theme is data. Yeah. These are the two dynamics. Your, what's your take on this multi-cloud conference opportunity? Look, I think it's uh, really interesting. It reflects kind of what's happening. Um, it, multi-cloud is becoming a reality. More and more people are, whether they like it or not, are actually you know, using multiple vendors. Uh, and they're trying to figure it out. So it, it's, I, think it's, I think it's great that we now have a forum. Um, there, there are likely to be more. We're, we're, uh, we're doing one with our friends at GitLab uh, at Cube, the next KubeCon, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, but, uh, you know, so getting, getting all the right people in here, focusing on the data problem, focus where we look at this from a universal control plane standpoint. There are lots of people here talking about the economics of this and, you know, what it means for venture capital in the next, uh, five years and what it means for kind of acquisition patterns and M&A. There are lots of really interesting aspects uh, being covered today. So. Yeah, it's a classic inaugural conference where with the organic communities here, you have a range of personas, entrepreneur, founder, That's executive, right. venture capitalist, all kind of having those candid conversations what to do next. That's right. They kind of all get multi-clouds here. Yep. The question is, what's it going to be? Um, what's it going to be? Well, <laughs> I think I was trying to figure that out. I think. Honestly, uh, um, you know, anything that makes it easy for enterprises to do uh, this massive lifting and shifting of infrastructure and uh, being able to control their data and deal with multiple vendors, the world, the world is increasingly heterogeneous. I mean, that's another way of saying multi-cloud, yeah. is just dealing with the heterogeneity. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be more and more heterogeneous because if you look at the trends, um, it's hard to imagine that all innovation is going to come out of one cloud company, right? Yeah. Or so if that's not the case, then you have people innovating, people creating all sorts of new platforms and infrastructure, ways of dealing with data, or ways of dealing with networking, or yeah. ways of dealing with storage or uh, databases and other things else. Now that you've got all this innovation happening, whether it's open source communities or not, right? Yeah. And then as an enterprise user, I want to consume it. Well, I have to deal with the heterogeneity. How do I consume it? How do yeah. I bring it together? How do I make sense of it? How do I get it all secured? How do I get it all under my compliance department? Th those are the opportunities around multi-cloud, um, and uh, it is a reality. And so at some, at some level, it, I'd be hard-pressed to find someone that says, yeah. you know, I'm using Amazon or Google or yeah. Azure only and not, say, using a a boutique cloud or another service or something else. Everybody's got some set of services that I are I mean, multi-cloud and multi-vendor, two words that you go back to the history of the computer industry. That's right. Multi-vendor is a heterogeneous environment. It is. Um, there's benefits to that. But all that was based upon the lock-in fear. And we're hearing some of that here. What's your view of lock-in? Where's the lock-in? Because you know, if value creation is the lock-in, um, the Red Hat guy's giving a talk about Walmart cloud yeah. versus niche clouds. It's all open source, so where's the lock-in? Yeah, I don't know if I uh, would subscribe to this as solving the lock-in problem. Like, every time you use a vendor, at some level, you're kind of, you know, you're relying on them. If they have a good service, you're kind of tied to them, right? But the, the more interesting aspect to me is the having a choice. So being able to say, I'm going to pick the best database vendor out there, one that suits my problem, and being able to do that without having to let go of the integration aspects of it. It's like, if I have to, you know, choose a database uh, SaaS service, right, uh, that I really like, but the the cost of doing that involves me creating a new vendor, doing some custom automation, custom integration, figuring out monitoring, figuring out logging, doing billing, doing metering, 
all of that stuff so that I can actually just consume one amazing service, that's a really large hurdle to kind of step over. And so, um, so I think part of multi-cloud is reducing the friction for being able to use things that, are, that you choose to. Do you have any commentary or advice for uh, other founders or other CEOs or even any younger developers? Because you know, the class, classical trained software developers, they think a certain way. You know, they either were pipelining it differently, not doing agile, or they're trained in agile, but now microservices is a whole nother ball game. Yeah, How I mean, do you get people to think microservices when they've been classically trained, agile? Like waterfall, you're saying? Or waterfall, yeah, both, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot happening right now. I would start, I, honestly, I would start with like looking at some of the best practices around building modern services and things like Kubernetes and others help um, microservice adoption and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, start with, honestly, starting with a bunch of open source is probably not a, not a bad place to be. Uh, but then find vendors that actually can support and run you know, what you want to do. Final question, tell us about your company, what's going on with you guys, give an update on Upbound, what's going on? Um, it's going great, we're growing, we, are, um, we launched this project called Crossplane, uh, like uh, earlier, or late last year. It's doing great, we're getting a ton of adoption on it, we're super happy with it, and we're uh, growing the company, we're almost tripled the company uh, this year, yeah. which is fantastic. Uh, and working on a, a SaaS offering that we're excited about. Uh, hopefully we'll come back here and talk about it when it's... Uh, and you guys hiring, started. looking for people, what's this update there? We are, we're hiring on the engineering side, we're hiring on the product side, uh, you know, I, yeah, all, all, it's, it's a startup, so, uh, <laughs> so you've never not stopped hiring. Not for the pain of heart. <laughs> no, definitely not. Well, Sam, thanks for coming on and sharing yeah, your absolutely. insights. Always, here always at the multi-cloud inaugural event, Escape, here in New York City, Escape 2019, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Back with more after this short break. <laughs>